The war in Ukraine has been going on for an entire 11 months now. With 110,000 Russian soldiers dead, an unknown amount of Ukrainian soldiers dead and wounded, it has been one of the bloodiest wars in continental Europe's history since World War II. And of course, the United States supports the Ukrainians in this war. But come to think of it, nobody has really explained from an American perspective why the United States is uh, supporting Ukraine for strategic purposes and why in the end, if Ukraine wins, that is to the United States' advantage. So stick with me and I will tell y'all why the United States at the governmental level is supporting Ukraine and what kind of benefits they're seeing that will come out of this. To start off, we have to talk about why the Russians are originally fighting this war. Um, the entire war back in the Donbass conflict that started in 2014 started off over the port city of Sevastopol and the port access rights that the Russians had. At that time, Crimea was a part of Ukraine, but the Russians, ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union, have been allowed to base their Black Sea fleet out of the harbor because of a thing that Ukraine and Russia agreed on, which was port access rights. So the Russian Navy could operate from Ukrainian territory, but that was it. They did not own Crimea or anything similar. That was until 2014, when a governmental change occurred in the Ukrainian nation started to go more European Union-based. This started to throw the port access rights into question and led the Russians into overthrowing the Ukrainian government in Crimea, annexing the area, and also leading to some backed rebels to uprise in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions to make it seem like it wasn't specifically over the port access rights, but it could have been over the idea of ethnic Russians living in Ukraine, which hadn't really made any sense to anyone, but moving on from that... So we're talking about this from an American perspective, of course, and while the Russians were able to control poor access, if the United States supports Ukraine and Ukraine eventually reclaims Crimea, this is a massive advantage for the United States for several reasons. First off, Sevastopol will not be used anymore as a port by the Russian Navy. And this is massive because Sevastopol is the only port that the Russians have access to that is a warm water port. Every other port they have freezes over for a couple of months during the winter and it makes it practically unusable for a navy at that time. There's no way to supply a navy because no resupply ships can dock, load, and then uh, ship out to that navy to get them supplies. It would be highly impractical to do that because they'd most likely have to try and get some other country to transport the supplies for them to a warm water port. So Sevastopol is the only warm water port where the Russians can power project with their navy year round. If the Russians lose Sevastopol, they lose the ability to try and create a tough diplomatic situation in any sphere where they're trying to exert influence. And one of the ones that is the most prevalent and the most obvious would be Syria. Russia, the Black Sea Fleet has been the fleet that has opposed the United States and the Syrian-backed rebels that the United States supports, which is called the Syrian Democratic Forces. And if the Black Sea Fleet could not be based in Crimea and had to go to another port elsewhere in Russia that was outside of the Black Sea and the Mediterranean as a whole, during political and diplomatic incidents like with Syria, the Russians will not be able to power project at all. The Suez and the, and the Strait of Gibraltar could most likely be closed off. Of course, that would require a little bit of diplomatic changes in that regard as well, but it would be a lot more difficult for the Russians to oppose anything that the United States would be doing in places like Syria, because we could support our forces, put down Assad's regime, and the Russians are nowhere around to make a protest about it and try and support the Assad regime through their navy. Another thing that they will not be able to do is help out their potential ally of Iran. Iran would become a lot more difficult to support because the closest fleet to Iran is the Black Sea Fleet again. So if the Russians lose Sevastopol, they also lose the ability to ever support the Iranians in any kind of naval confrontations or engagements in the future. They would have to take the port out of Sevastopol, which is the uh, East Pacific fleet, and they would have to take that fleet and sail it all the way around East Asia through the Indian Ocean into Iran to support them, which becomes somewhat impractical for the Russians by and large. So right there, we can see that this is a massive benefit for the United States diplomatically because this is going to be cutting the Russians a lot out of potential spheres that they could try and dabble in that are in their region. Not only that, but if Ukraine joins NATO after this war, after they kick the Russians out of Crimea and the Donbass, the NATO front line is no longer in Poland, it's now in Ukraine. And if Ukrainians allow American forces to base and build uh, bases and airfields inside of Ukraine, 
U.S. forces are within less than 200 miles striking distance to Volgograd, cutting off a vital artery of the Russian economy within a matter of most likely days or weeks at the onset of the war, and that also gives them a second route of attack towards Moscow. The United States already has a route of attack to Moscow from Latvia and Estonia and also to St. Petersburg as well, but Ukraine adds a second direction, which will take the brunt of the force off of one side, and the Russians will have to divide their efforts into stopping both routes of advance towards the city of Moscow. And so by getting a front line in Ukraine and having Ukraine join NATO, we will be in striking distance of two other cities. We'll be making Moscow fairly e uh, much easier to get to, and we'll also be in striking distance of Volgograd, which can cut the Russian economy uh, off, practically, and put them to a complete standstill. So this is all incredibly important from a strategic perspective to revoke Russia's access to the Black Sea fleet in Sevastopol, and also to open up some additional routes of advance if things were to go a little bit hot in the future. The final one is that Ukraine it has potential to become a strong economic power in Europe. We've already seen with many former Eastern Bloc countries like Poland, their economies have practically skyrocketed ever since they were able to leave the Eastern Bloc. And we can look right here at the GDP of Poland. And let me put that in correctly. We can see right here the GDP of Poland is 679.4 billion US dollars. When it left the Western, well, when it le left the Warsaw Pact, named after the capital of Poland, Warsaw, in 1990, their GDP was but a mere 65.9 billion dollars. Their GDP has literally, um, how in the world do you even say, it? multiplied by a factor of 10 over the course of nearly 30 years, which is impressive and incredibly good. Not only that, the United States can access that economy, which also benefits us well economically and allows the United States to continue to have a pretty strong national economy and markets that may be willing to buy American products or product or a market where Americans can buy Polish products or the or Europe as a whole, which is also a large part of the American sphere um, because obviously NATO is a part of the United States sphere. But moving on from that, it's all beneficial, not just for the United States and our further strategic and economic interests, but it's also very beneficial for Ukraine as well in that regard. They will be able to grow their economy to a level the likes of which has not been seen yet. Of course, all the way up until 2014, the Ukrainians were largely aligned to the Russian sphere, and there's not a lot of economic growth to be had there. With the Ukrainians joining the Western sphere, which has a lot more capital to invest in Ukraine, much like they did in Poland, we will probably see that the Ukrainian economy will go through in a massive economic boom because of that. And so while this video's whole entire point is to explain why the United States is seeing this as a strategic interest and also an economic interest, that is not to say that those interests are mutual are not mutual. They are entirely mutual. Ukraine can also come to benefit from all of these things as well. The Ukrainians will not have to worry about the Russians literally having a port within their territory. They also will have American forces inside their borders, which practically ensures that for the rest of your nation's history, as long as the United States is strong and standing and the NATO alliance exists, no one is ever going to attack you again. And no one will have the ability to really wage war with you unless if they want to get curb stomped within weeks or months. And then lastly, their economy will boom, which will lead to a lot of prosperity for their citizens and a new golden age in Ukrainian history. And so, of course, while I'm saying while it's beneficial for America, you can also see that that, in turn, is beneficial for the Ukrainians as well. And so I hope this explains, if, you, if you've ever had the question, why does this really benefit the United States and why should the United States be supporting them? Because some people, uh, if you ever listen around, some people say, we shouldn't be supporting Ukraine because we don't get any benefit from it. But if you listen to all the points I have laid out, and they all are the strategic, strategic and economic interests we have, it definitely does benefit us to support Ukraine. It, it benefits us to support them 100% and to make sure that this war ends with them on top. And so with that, I hope that explains in the best terms possible. It, let me know if I didn't make sense. And if y'all think there is any additional stuff as to why the United States is supporting Ukraine, let me know. Of course, I'm only focusing on the American centric ideas of why to support Ukraine right now from like a governmental interest as to why they would. Uh, I'll probably be making more videos as to why this is beneficial to Ukraine and maybe even vi other videos like why it's beneficial to Europe, what the Chinese most likely think about it and others. Uh, but with that, 
for now. I thank you all so much once again for watching. If y'all did enjoy, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to also comment and subscribe because we run these videos every once in a while whenever we can. And today I had just enough time after coming back from college. And so with that, thank you all for watching and I will see y'all in the next one.